it was 1.5x the the b driven example that that we took uh, so y equal 20 plus 1.5 uh, and let's say uh, the vitamin d is 95 okay it's, it's in terms of 9.5 so y takes a value of 34 the actual value could be uh, different and and the um, so residual is just the observed value minus predicted okay so if the observed value is 36 and the uh, predicted value is 34 then the error is just 36 minus 34 which is 2 okay similarly you calculate that for all the observations and, and see what the results are and then so here you can see you have you know 34 but the actual value is different actual value is more right 45 or something so you take the difference perpendicular difference and that's the error and you do that for all observations till the time you see all right so once you have the residuals you plot them okay and residuals can be really uh, good looking and sometimes having some uh, not at all uh, having any pattern so we want non lead we want uh, no pattern in the residual so the last graph is the best one where there is no correlation there is no relationship between the residuals but the other one you can see there seems to be some pattern here there is increasing trend here there is completely increasing trend here there is a smooth curvy linear uh, relationship here we do not accept such uh, residuals there is something wrong with that then we need to adjust the model we need to see the linear relation may not fit this particular data but the last one is is a right one because the residuals are uh, uniformly distributed across the x-axis which is an important thing and the second one is that there is no uh, correlation uh, between uh, these data points okay they are not related at all so uh, that's one good criteria of judging a good model so when we do residual analysis only then we can uh, we can be sure that linear regression has actually worked well for this particular data set we also can uh, check the, the whether there is the presence of uh, homoscedasticity or not. So homoscedasticity is one of the assumptions in irrigation which says that there has to be a constant variance. In the first graph you can see there is no constant variance, less variance and then it increases over time. The second case is a typical case, okay, but you can see that there is a pattern in this case, okay, the correlation is non-zero and that's not a correct thing. Third you can see there is no uh, correlation see uh, there is no correlation it is perfectly distributed uh, across the uh, x-axis but the error variance is increasing over time and that's also not an ideal thing the ideal thing is the last one where the error variance is constant at the same time it is uniformly distributed across the x-axis and that's an ideal thing we can also see the independence and which is very clear i've just said in the first uh, you know a few slides ago where you know we, we said that you know there is no relationship between the error term and that's one one of the uh, requirements yes. and you know here it is like non-independent here it is uh, you know uh, it is non-independent but you know here there is seem to be a pattern right uh, and here also is, is seem to be a pattern so the first two cases are not cases of uh, non-independent but second second one is right so uh, the medical data set that we took now we have plotted uh, the residuals and you can see there is a clearly there is no pattern the uh, correlation you can actually create a parallel line so that is like slope equal to zero or correlation is zero no correlation and they're also independent right there is no uh, relationship and no pattern uh, and they are you know distributed uh, equally in both in the positive side and negative side that's also another requirement of linear regression so if you actually take the average it has to be very close to zero so multiple linear regression so uh, if you use one independent variable it's called a simple linear regression if you use more than one independent variables uh, then it is multiple linear regression so if in this example if you not uh, if you just add another variable for example if you add age uh, and we already have the quantity of vitamin D but now we have age as another independent variable then now it has become multiple linear regression so previously we used to have we used to fit a linear line now we will have a linear plane because now it's a three dimensional uh, thing right one dependent variable and two independent so it's a three dimension so instead of a line we will have a plane 
if you go beyond four dimension of course you cannot even represent that uh, on a 2d plane but up to three dimension you can of, of course visualize that so you simply have to uh, instead of a line it has to be a plane and this is how it looks right this is how it looks so instead of having just one slope parameter so you'll have two slope parameters for in the case of uh, a regression plane so if you estimate that you see there's a positive relationship uh, with the vitamin d quantity and the negative relationship with a that means if a is increases your dsst score will likely to go down and that is shown by the negative coefficient here okay and the quantity by which it will go down is given by 0.46 if it is goes up by one year the corresponding uh, the corresponding decrease in dsst score will go down by 0.46 all right then you do your hypothesis testing just to see if both the coefficients you know with vitamin d and a is uh, significant or not only when they are significant with your hypothesis testing you need to interpret otherwise there's no point in interpreting these coefficients so uh, in nutshell we just revise what's multiple integration this has more than one predictor or more than one independent variable um, Yeah. So, so what essentially we mean in multiple linear regression is that each regression coefficient is just the amount of change in the outcome variable that would be expected for one unit change in the predictor if all variables in the model were held constant. That means just a slight deviation for what we learned in the simple linear regression. That means if you want to un interpret beta one, you need to keep every other variable constant. You cannot increase uh, variables uh, at the same time. So that's one way of just interpreting okay and uh, if you uh, if you uh, you know do not keep them constant then they will be somewhat correlated and that will create problem for the linear equation interpretation so uh, a few things few more things uh, about uh, linear regression that is important um, sometimes you will not have uh, a data set suitable for uh, lin linear regression sometimes you will have binary uh, data okay in that case multiple linear regression is not suitable so one thing i just forgot to tell you is that the dependent variable in this case has to be continuous okay i mean both all the graphs that we have seen so far are x y on x y plane and they are continuous in nature but what if you have non-continuous data? We have, you know, uh, categorical data. You have you know, discrete data. In such cases, we use what is known as logistic regression instead of linear regressions. Sometimes you will have time to an event data. In such case, you, you use survival analysis, which we use Cox proportional hazard regression model, which is different from linear regression or logistic regression to build the model. So here is a snapshot of if the what is the type of data and uh, what type of model that you should build and what is the general representation of such such a model so this is in 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 a, a, this is a snapshot okay the few problems with linear regression one is multi collinearity that means the independent variables should not be highly correlated if that is the case then it is going to have problem with the data so before you be the linear regression you make sure that there isn't a lot of multi -collinearity. I mean there is no I mean the independent variables should not be highly correlated that is the case just drop one of them and if you are using them then there are statistical tests nowadays available automatically that will tell you if uh, the, the there is presence of multi -collinearity. and if that is the case just you know handle that uh, and before you actually go ahead with finalizing the model sometimes your model will be overfitting that means it does very well in the data that you have but it won't do well in the new data set okay which is this which is to say that your uh, model is giving a good result in the uh, data set uh, in the data set that we have now but it's too good it may not do the same in future and that for that's what we have that's what we are intending to build right we are building a model to predict future not the past 
because past data is already there so that is the typical case of overfitting and uh, how do you know that well you just build a model in a data and then take a sample of other data similar data and see if it is working and then try to rebuild the model if it is not working fine okay so that's how you can handle overfitting so sometimes overfitting can be found out uh, you know automatically nowadays you have softwares where you know uh, a lot of things have been automated if you use SAS or R or MATLAB then there are many ways in which you can uh, find out there's something called cross validation and highly encourage you to read about it which is used to ensure that the model is not overfitted so uh, One of the way in which overfitting can also bring uh, more problems is when you build a model on your population data set without, uh, without taking into consideration the fact that you need to test your model in, in a separate data set. And that's why you need to divide your data into two groups, uh, typically we're calling that as training and test data. You build a model in training data and then test it in the separate data set called test data so if you have 100 observations build a model in the first 70 and test your model in the rest 30 and see if it is working in the 30 what's more important is if it is working in 30 than uh, in the first 70 because anyway the model has already seen this data the first 70 observations so it's important to have that in mind so that's more or less about linearization. <coughs> 